Hello, hello everybody. It is six o'clock Monday night, so it's time for Monday Night Live with me and the Stamp Maven. I hope you guys all had a great Mother's Day yesterday, all you moms, grandmas, aunts, uh, cousins, whoever you are. I hope you just had a great day. We did. We went to our daughter's house, and she has three little ones under the age of three. So we had a great time playing outside. It was very hot, but we had the sprinklers on, so that was really fun. Um, I'm so excited for tonight's project. It's going to be a tri-fold angled card, and <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through it step by step. If you are a new stamper, don't worry. I know you're going to be able to do this when you try later to make one of these. Later in the week, I will have a full project sheet for you on my blog, and I'll also post it to YouTube. But as I'm working along on things, feel free to leave me questions in the comments, and I'll really try to get to them as we're going along. And if I don't, I'll answer them afterwards like I always do. All right, are you ready to get started? Let me flip the camera and off we'll go. Okay, here we go. Hey, Carol, how are you doing this evening? I hope you are ready for this fun card. I think, well, actually, I know you will do this card once um, you practice. Hey, Kay from North Carolina. Is it hot out there? Boy, it sure is here, and it is going to be hot all week, I'm afraid. All right, let me show you our card. It is right here. I'm actually using the Happy Hedgehog stamp set, and it's got these cute little hedgehog images there's a little bush that we're going to use, a butterfly, and our greeting. And I do have a couple other samples to show you. So when we're done, don't jet out right away because I don't want you to miss anything. So here is the inside of our card. And... It is a fun little pocket with our greeting inside. I know, Carol, I love this little fella, too. It's just so much fun to do different things with him. All right, so what we are going to do first, let me bring in my trimmer here. I'm actually starting with... A piece of eight and a half by eleven cardstock, and I just cut it at five and a half by eleven. Now we're going to do some scoring. So your trimmer has two blades. The darker one is your cutting blade. We're going to move that out of the way, and we're going to use the scoring blade. So our first score is going to be at three eight three and three eighths inches. And our next score, and I'm going to open up my arm here, is going to be at seven and five eighths inches. Now if you are an experienced crafter, what you probably will have noticed that you could have made your first score at three and three eighths and then just turned it around 
and scored it again at three and three eighths, and you'd end up with the same measurements that I did. So either way you like to do it is great. Okay, now we're going to turn our cardstock, and we are going to score it. Well, we're not going to score it. Let me take those words back. We are going to place a little tick mark right here at our one and a half inches. Let me get these blades out of the way. We're going to put a little tick mark right here by going right in the track up at the top and then I'm going to do it also at the bottom. That's off camera but you just have to trust me. Then we're going to open up this guide and we're going to move our paper over to the one inch and we're going to do the same thing here and down at the bottom. <clears throat> All right, we're going to move our trimmer out of the way for a moment. So now we have our little marks here and here, and we have them here and here. I'm going to bring in my chalk marker, and I'm going to actually make some little marks here so you'll be able to see it better you, when I do my cutting. You don't want to do this on yours because of course you don't want those big chalk marks. Now the other thing, I'm going to put a mark right where I scored, okay? Because that's going to help us when we do our cutting. So let me put one here at the bottom too. And now let me hold that up so you can see all the marks that we've made. Okay, now we are ready to do our trimming. We're going to connect the dots and we are going to use our cutting blade. So what you will notice when I do this cutting is they're going to be symmetrical on both sides. And I actually, actually we're going to leave it this way. So I'm going to take first this side and I'm going to put it into my trimmer and I'm going to line up that chalk mark right here with the one right here at the bottom of the guide. Now the cool thing is you can manipulate this and you can still see these marks right in your guide. So let me just put that up and you can see how you can still see them. Now I'm going to show you a tip Sometimes if you start at the bottom, you will catch this little corner in your blade. And of course you don't want that. So a way around that is start in the middle, go up and then down, and then you'll see you have your perfect cut. Then we're going to do the same thing over on this side. We're going to line up that line here and here where our chalk marks are. So that's our first cut. Did that make sense to everybody? Okay. Now we're going to come over and we're going to do this one. So we're going to line up that mark there and right here. So chalk mark at the top and the bottom slice. Now over here we are going to do the same thing and chalk there, chalk there, and you can do it outside of your guide or move it around once your guide is there. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but 
I want to I keep moving that a little bit. All right. I want to start in the middle again, go up and down so I don't ruin that point. Okay, so here we have our piece. And just to show you what it's going to look like, we actually will go ahead and fold it. And then notice it doesn't matter if I go left down and then right or right and then left. But what I want to point out to you Notice this is a little deeper. You want that to be the top of your card. This is a little shallower. So that's going to be the bottom. So just remember, deeper, top, shallow, bottom. Now, I am going to quickly just go ahead and use my bone folder Give this a good crease, and then I'm going to set it aside. Okay. You have these little scraps, and, you know, there's stuff you can do with that on a card. Like, if you wanted to put them in the corners and use as decoration. But I'm throwing mine away. I've got too many little pieces, right? Okay, so now let me show you the designer series paper that we're going to use. Okay, it is from this cool pack, which is called the Design and Daydream 12 by 12 inch. Now, this is a host pack of paper. I'm going to just kind of flip through it here. It's double-sided. You get 48 12 by 12 sheets. Guys, this is a great buy for this paper. You do have to have a $150 order, either yourself or grab some friends and order it. And then you can get that. It's got Blackberry Bliss, Daffodil Delight, mint macaron, old olive, petal pink, and pool party. So it has got some great colors in there. And I'm also using it on another one of the samples that I will show you a bit later. Now, here's a trick. We have to cut our designer series paper. Here's the sample. Here's where I use the designer series paper. I know I've heard from a lot of my customers, they struggle with getting it to match exactly. Well, I'm going to show you a trick for that. So you're going to cut two pieces and they're going to be three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Remember, don't worry about writing this all down. I'm going to have a project sheet on my blog and I'm going to do it, um, post it, the video on YouTube, and I'll have the project sheet on my blog. What you're going to do is you're going to take these two pieces that we've cut and you're going to put the right side together. Now, it wouldn't matter if I wanted to use this side or this side. This paper does not really have a direction. If you wanted to use a paper that does have a direction, you need to be mindful of how you cut it so it's going the right direction on your card. But one of the reasons I chose this was that it's not going to matter. All right, so like I said, we're going to put them together, then we're going to cut them at the same time. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did on our cardstock. We're going to mark this at one and a half with our handy dandy pencil on the top. 
And then we're going to also mark it again at one inches. Make sure you keep it together so it doesn't split or shift. Okay, so there it is. Now, let me get my chalk marker here and just give that a little pop right here and right here so you can see that hopefully a little better. Let's hold it up here. Can you see those there, my little mark here and here? All right, we're going to cut it exactly the same way. We're just not going to put a mark down here or here. We only need our marks here. Then we're going to cut down to the bottom here. So same way we did it before. We're going to put it in our trimmer, line it up. We're going to start in the middle, go up and then down so we have our point. Then we're going to go over here. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Get it in our trimmer there and right here in our point and zip and zip. Okay, now we want to get this on our card. So this is the piece that is going to go right here. Okay, now what I will show you every now and again, you get, it gets off just a little bit. So if you need to, you can just trim off a little bit more here. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but I just wanted to show you sometimes it'll get off just a wee little bit and you just fix that. Okay, now you want to make sure you put your adhesive on the right side. Well, in this case, it's the wrong side, but I mean on the right side that you're wanting to glue so it goes the right way. Okay, let me find this other piece just to see if I might want to move them around. Nope, that's probably just fine. So let's use our Tombow multi-purpose and there it comes. When you're gluing, you don't want to get too close to the end. The edge here of your paper. If you get a little too crazy, <clears throat> it does dry clear and you'll be able to fix that and it won't matter at all. All right, so there's our first one and then over here on our second. And remember, we're going to see those chalk marks because I didn't take them off. Okay, so let's get that glue right on here. A little X in the center. X marks the spot just to keep it stuck down in the center. All right. There we go. And we've got this looking pretty darn good. Okay, so now we've got those two sides there. So now we're going to stamp our inside piece. So I cut this ahead of time to three and three quarters by five. Normally, you on the inside, you would do it to four by five and a quarter, but I'll show you why I didn't. Because I want this pocket to be smaller so you'll see more of the designer series paper. So it's the back side of this pattern that we used and I am going to put this down 
on the inside of our card. And this is four by five and a quarter because I want a lot of this to show. Now, if I want to send this to someone, which I do, I will just take my handy dandy little sand eraser and I'll go in after this live and I will take it and it will, after I do it enough, it will take off all this chalk marking and I'll be able to send it to somebody. You can probably see how it's already lightened it, but I'm going to get it all the way off. Okay, so here's this piece. What we're going to do is we are just going to cut this in half on the diagonal. I'm going to put both points in my trimmer, start in the middle, and now I've got two that are the same size. Let's deep six that and let's bring in our stamps. So, one thing to show you, I want, we might have to trim off a little bit more. So, if you wanted to, you could leave this right here and maybe put a couple of jewels or something, but I actually don't want it to be seen. So, and that's still going to be seen. So, it's going to have to be up about like that. So, I'm going to trim off, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to probably take off about another half inch or so. I think that'll do it. So, let me come back over here and see if that will do it. It should. Yep, now you can't see it at all. So when your recipient gets it, there will be a total surprise. All right, let's bring in my scrap paper and my little uh, piercing mat because we are going to be using our hedgehog set, which is a photopolymer set, so we need a cushion here. For the bush, we are going to use pear pizzazz. In the paper pack, there's also old olive, but I want it to be a little lighter. So I'm going to use pear pizzazz. I'm going to ink that up right here and let's just ink it up and then I always like to give it a little gander just to make sure I got all the ink on there. Now I'm going to stamp it so probably about right here so part of it is on and part of it will be off. And that's just going to create a little more intrigue, shall we say, to our card. Okay, so we're going to peel off this part. And now I'm going to show you how I did this. In this stamp set, there's another little image and it is just the grass. So first though, I want to stamp our hedgehog and then I can show you what I want to do. So here's our little hedgehog. We're going to ink him up and I'm going to stamp him right here. And another tip if you're new at stamping, if you've been doing this a while, you probably already know this tip. If you hold your stamp after you've inked it down on your paper and maybe count to three to five seconds, 
that will make sure that your ink has transferred and you'll get a good image. Okay, now what I wanted to show you, this looks fine, just like it is, but I don't want my hedgehog to be like he is just standing in the air. So I'm going to come in with this grass stamp and I'm going to add more grass. See here how I'm doing that? Just going to go along and then we'll get his little feeties in the grass here. And if you want, you can continue it all the way to the edge like I did here, or you can just stop it. And I think on this one, I'm going to just stop it for fun. Okay, now the next thing we're going to put in there is I want to add a little more color to my hedgehog. So I'm going to bring in my soft suede ink and a sponge dauber. I'm going to load up my sponge dauber tap it off a little bit because I don't want too much and then I'm going to just start tapping a little bit here on my hedgehog. Now hopefully you can see that he's got just a little more definition right here. Then I'm going to take my Stampin' Blend which is also soft suede Hey, I wanted to say hi to Melissa and Maria. Glad you could pop in. And then I'm going to add a little definition right here along the bottom of Mr. Hedgehog or Miss Hedgehog. I'm going to fill in the feet here with my blend. That's what I love, stamping up all of the colors match so that makes it really easy to color. Now I've got a Stampin' Right marker. I'm going to add a little definition here to the black eye. I want to make his nose a little bit blacker and right here his mouth. Okay, then the other thing you could do if you were so inclined is take your soft suede marker, which is also the same color, and you could just go up here along the top, kind of like I did down here with the blend, and just give him a little more definition on a little bit of his back. Okay, now we need one more little thing colored here, and that is the ears. I'm taking the Flirty Flamingo Stampin' Blend, and I'm going to color in the ear. Now, I use the light. If you wanted, you could use the dark. You could use both of them to kind of blend, but I'm happy with it just the way it is. Okay, now we're going to close this up, and if you wanted, if you wanted to come in, I still have a little bit of ink left there, you could come on in and add even grass up a little higher. Now, I had not cleaned this so you notice I got a little bit of um, ink there where I didn't want it. So all I'm going to do is, let me show you the inside here where I put the butterfly. Well, I'm going to get just a little crafty here. And I'm going to put our butterfly right here. Okay, and what's cool where I did it, that little mark, I'm going to make his little body a little darker here with that soft suede pen. And I'm going to add these antenna up there. 
So see, there is never a mistake. There is just an opportunity to embellish or color. All right, now I've got this little guy. So I want to get him sort of set where I want him so I don't see him. So that's perfect. So what I'm going to do is take that little pencil and I'm going to just make a little mark right there. And I'll erase it when I'm done. Now I'm going to take my glue and go ahead, if it will come out here, and I'm going to put it down. Notice I am only putting it the bottom and the side here. And then we're going to line that right up where that mark is. I'm not going to put glue here because I need to stamp our sentiment. And I need my Blackberry ink. And then I have just got a scrap right, whoops, right here that I probably used for something else. So I'm going to get my greeting. I'm going to use the same block that I used our happy little hedgehog for. And I'm going to use, let's get it on here right side. And it says finding a friend is the best discovery of all. And I love that sentiment. But the fact that it's in a pocket, it's like you're discovering the sentiment. And then the butterfly and the hedgehog discovered each other. Hey, Joyce. Hey, Tammy. Thanks for popping in. So let's go ahead and get our greeting or our sentiment, whatever you want to call it. We're going to stamp it right here. We're going to hold it down for about five seconds and then we've got our perfect image. Now I'm going to take my trimmer and I'm going to chop it off here about here and then look what we're going to do. On the card here I took some ribbon but you know what we don't have our crinkle ribbon in that color not to worry i got my old olive stamp and blend which matches the inside of our card and i am just going to take that blend and you always want to make sure you do it on a scrap piece, right? And I'm going to just color this ribbon. Then I'm going to get my scissors. You could leave it white, of course, but why? Since we have a blend that matches, then we're going to take it. We're just going to make a little loop and we're going to put it right here. Now, I have right over here, let me set that down, I've got a little mini stapler. Stampin' Up! used to sell these. They don't any longer, but I'm sure you can find one at a craft store. If you don't like using a stapler, all you have to do is use your adhesive and put it on the back. I love using staples. Okay, so then here we've got the inside of our card is done. Now we just have to finish the outside with our belly band. So when we cut our Blackberry Bliss cardstock to make it five and a half by 11, that left this long piece. So to create our belly band, we're going to put our arm out. We are going to cut 
along the long side at nine and a half. And then we're going to cut this part at one inch. If you wanted a fatter belly band, like I'm going to show you in some of the other samples, that's just fine. If you want a belly band this side, hey, it's your project. You can do whatever you want to do, guys. Okay, now let me show you another tip. I've got lots of tips for you tonight. Do you ever have trouble when you're making your belly bands? Do you try to score it and then have it fit around? Well, I get super frustrated doing that. So here's my tip. I take my bone folder and I do this on the belly band. I distress the paper. I do it two or three, three or four, just to get a little more flexibility on this belly band. Then I get it all set up, whichever flap I want. I think I'm going to do the right over the left. Then I put it down right here, try to center it so you have the kind of the same part sticking out on both the right and the left. Then I bring it over, crease it, and you can do that with your finger and or your bone folder. Okay, so then do the same thing over here. Now, I'm going to come in with my Stampin' Seal, and I'm going to use that to put down my adhesive on that edge to make the belly band. You could use liquid glue, or you could use Terran tape. I recommend using the Seal Plus rather than just the Seal because you don't want this fella to come apart, right? Okay, so I, ahead of time, cut these out using my layering circle dies. This is uh, Daffodil Delight. This is Petal Pink. So I just use scraps. But before we put those together, we need to stamp another little hedgehog for our outside. So let me get a little scrap piece here. So we will be able to stamp and then punch out this little critter. All right, so I'm going to use, where did I put my little stamp set? I'm going to use this smaller one right here, but I'm going to put them on a different block because I still have all that green stuff on there. All right, so I'm going to take this little guy, and you notice it's different than this one, but that doesn't matter. I just want to show you, you could use either one. So we're going to stamp him in our, oops, let's do him the right way, in our soft suede. And we're going to do the same thing. On this outside, we're going to take our blend and we're going to color in the little ears because we want them to have pink ears. We're going to take our marker black. We're going to do a little definition on the eye and the nose. Make his mouth a little bit better. Then this time... I'm going to use, instead of the blend, I'm going to use the marker to color in the little feet. I wanted to just show you again how great our products 
coordinate. So let's say you didn't have the blend. Well, you could just use the regular marker. And then we're just going to go along here and do that definition. Isn't that fun? And then come along on the top here and give him maybe some spiky hair. How about that? All right. Then over here, just give him some. It just gives a little more definition here. Do a little more down here. Okay, then we're going to take our sponge again and give him a little more color on his body. Make sure it's you can see it. There it is. Then I'm going to come in with my punch and I'm going to, well, I didn't do that very well, so we're going to just rip this off so I'll be able to get it into my punch the right way. I really didn't think about that as I was doing it. So let's see if I can line it up the way I want them to. And you know what? I'm not going to be able to. So no worries. We're just going to come around with our scissors and we're going to do it because we can and this is not going to take much time at all we just zip around here and cut his little feet this fortunately isn't too much of a crazy image to fussy cut I just stamped it on the wrong side, so that just, I should have looked at that beforehand, but hey, you'll forgive me, right? Still a cute project, I think. Okay, there's the ears. Let's come over here, get his little nosy. Boop, and there we go. No harm, no foul. So, we're going to take our glue. We are going to get this circle down on our daffodil right here. Then we're going to use dimensionals this time. And you know, I never waste, so I've got these little pieces of them left. So we are going to put a couple here on our hedgehog. And we're going to pop him onto that belly band. Then we're going to take him like this. And I'm going to use my seal to make sure that he stays on there like he's supposed to. Voila, then the last piece is, look here, these are the 2021-23 in color opal rounds. Well, I'm going to take them and kind of just pick ones that I think look great on the outside. So even though they're not exactly the right color, because this is petal pink and this is pink passion, they look great with this. So I'm going to stick this one here. And then I'm going to put one right over here. And that is actually the Fresh Free Shop. So there we've got our card. So let's got our belly band and whoops, there's the inside and we discovered our little friend. I'll use my sand eraser to take all these chalk marks away. If it was just the pencil, I'd erase it with my pencil eraser. So remember when you're doing it, 
don't use a white chalk marker. Okay, now let me show you my other samples. I love them. Okay, here is the first one. Don't you love this? I used our new in color Tahitian Tide and I used, let me grab the paper over here. Okay, you're gonna hear a noise when I drop my other big stack of paper. You never know what you're gonna get with me. I have such a fun time doing these. Let me show you the paper. It is right here. And it is called the Perfectly Penciled. And I love this paper. It is black and white. So it's got double sides, of course. But do you notice all of the flower, floral type pieces, leaves? Well, I used this piece right here. And lo and behold, I used my Tahitian Tide Stampin' Blends and my Parakeet Party Blends. And I colored in some of those flowers. Then I used my Sending Smiles Bundle Stamp Set and Dies. I used this, whoops, the sending die right here. It's got a mate, so if you wanted to stamp sending, then you could cut it out. It's the right size when you have the image. It's just a little smaller on the case. So I took black cardstock, cut out my word, and are you ready? On the inside, I stamped a card to say hello, which is one of the greetings. Then I used this little guy right here, stamped here, and then I used three of our black matte dots. This color is very similar, but not the same as our tempting turquoise. All right, so that's the first sample. Then look at this one. I used the same host pack of paper that I showed you before, but I used this piece. Whoops, no. Good grief, Ann. I grabbed the wrong one. So I used, let me grab it for you. I used this piece right here. And I, when I stamped the inside, I stamped this flower here, which is actually from a different stamp set. It's the hand penned petals and I used this image right there because I thought it looked very much like these little ones here. So hey, mix and match. Now, do you notice anything different about this card from this card? Well, yep, I think some of you did. I only did the angling at the top and I kept this straight. You did the same measurements as I showed you on the cardstock and the designer series paper, but you only did them on the top. I made a little bit wider belly band, so I did one and a half inches by the nine and a half. And then the last thing I did, let me put it back together. You know how I love using the word hello? So I got one of my stamps, stamped the hello there. Then I used the circle die and the Blackberry Bliss. Then I used the Daisy Punch 
punched out two daisies, layered them over each other, and then used one of the see-through opal rounds. Then all I'm going to do is I have a lot of room here to write the card to my friend. What do you think about these? Did you like these cards? Oh, I hope you did. Now, before I let you go, you know, I've got to tell you how you can save some money. Let me flip my camera back up here because I have one of my sweet friends who already took advantage of this. So, right now, Stampin' Up! You can join Stampin' Up! for $99, no shipping. You get to pick $125 of any products, but for this month only, you get a $66.50 bonus. So what you get is all of the new in-color ink pads, all of the colors, which are Starry Sky, Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis, Parakeet Party, which looks suspiciously close to, but it isn't, Lemon Lime Twist, and Tahitian Tide. So you get the ink pads, you get an assorted pack of cardstock, you get some designer series paper, the pack that has all the colors, and some jewels. So that is almost $200 worth of products. You're only spending $99 plus tax. Okay, that's it. That's my commercial. But I don't want you coming back to me and saying I didn't tell you about it. If you're interested in that, give me a private Facebook message or just give me a shout at Ann at stampmaven.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed these projects. I'm going to sign off now. Remember, the recording will take place. I'll post it right after this. Later in the week, I'll have a project sheet for you on my blog, and I'm going to also post this to YouTube. All right. Cheerio. Have a great evening.